English Year 8, Term 3B, Creative Writing. Welcome to Week 7, Lesson 3, our final lesson on this scheme, where we're going to complete uh, and consolidate our learning on writing letters, but also all the learning we've done over the last few weeks, speech writing, article writing, as well as the features we've used in narrative and descriptive writing. As always, your five question quiz is accessible through the following means. You can click on the knowledge retrieval sheet icon at the bottom of the screen if this is a PowerPoint or a PDF. If you're on a downloaded video, type in the um, address at the bottom of the screen there, or if you're on YouTube, just click the link in the description below. This will take you to a five question quiz where the information you need is on your knowledge retrieval sheet and you'll receive immediate feedback on how well you've done. So our learning intentions for this session is to sequence a piece of transactional writing to engage the reader. So sequence, as we talked about in the last session, means the order in which our paragraphs come. And we want to make sure that there's a clear and logical order, that it makes sense. We're going to aspire to craft a piece of transactional writing to sustain the engagement of the reader. Now notice the subtle difference between the two. One is we're engaging the reader, which means that they are interested, that we've got their, we've, we've hooked them like we did with our narrative writing. But notice that the top learning intention is to sustain it, that we don't just grab them with the first sentence, that all the way through they are really interested and intrigued by the topic, by the arguments, by the supported opinions, and that everything we've written is clear. So that's what we're learning and aspiring to do in today's lesson. So let's start today by practicing the paragraph sandwiching that Mrs. Garbutt talked to us about in a previous session. We were making sure that we don't just have random paragraphs, but that they're linked together. And that that's thinking about the opening sentence and the closing sentence. So a paragraph will appear on the screen and you'll have about 60 seconds, maybe two minutes to write the opening and closing sentence for that paragraph. I've left on the right hand side and I'll keep them on on each of the following are transferable phrases to help you along should you need it. Also try and embed those into what you write and that will really help. And remember the advice from previous sessions that one way to go is a rhetorical question and direct address. So the word you and a question is a great way to open or end a paragraph. So let's have a look at what we've got. So our first paragraph then. Over 90% of video games have violent content in and over 180 movies released last year were certified as 18. Okay, so what? You know, this this paragraph is going nowhere and started off in nowhere. It's just a random fact. So I want you to write both the opening and closing sentence for this paragraph. Give yourself about between one and two minutes to do it. Pause the recording and press play when you finish. So as I said before, this paragraph just starts in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so we're talking about the violence uh, that video games and movies have. So let's start off with... Um, we as a civilized society cannot allow violence to infect the younger generation. Well, that's much more forceful, isn't it? Um, these days, viol violence in our media is causing a dystopian nightmare. Great. Let's end with a rhetorical question. Um, how can we allow this uh, violent epidemic to continue? Anything like that where we've got direct address in is a nice way to end because once again, we are focused on the reader. We're leaving them th with a thought. Okay, so this next paragraph then. Aggression courses through your veins as the rap music whispers profanity and violence through your headphones. So this is someone obviously painting the picture, um, and envisage this paragraph about the effects of music. However, we, we're just kind of thrown in there, aren't we? We need the opening and the closing sentences for this paragraph. So just a couple of minutes, write those down in your notebook and press play when you finish. Okay, so I would obviously start here with envisage this or just imagine. I need to show and signpost to the reader that I am inviting them to imagine a scenario. So envisage this, and I might put something like, for me, envisage this, uh, you, um, you turn you you um, press play on the latest album uh, that you've um, acquired from your friends. Aggression courses through your it. So I'd lead into it. You know, I'd introduce that. And to end with, I would do something like maybe a rhetorical question again, or something like. Uh, unfortunately, this is the situation for 
25,000 young people in our, in our nation. So I'd make it clear that this is something that a lot of people are focusing on. Or like I say, a rhetorical question, how can we allow this uh, dystopian nightmare to um, continue in our children's ears and brains? So try to make it quite specific to what you're actually uh, writing about. Okay, and the last one then. Hopefully you're getting the idea here. One teenager who wishes to remain anonymous commented, I used to be so well behaved. Now the music I listen to makes me want to lash out at everyone around me. Again, we've got a, a nice anecdote there, an interview, but not introduced and not ended well, so it doesn't flow. So two minutes, pause the recording, write out the opening and closing sentence and press play when you've done that. Okay, so again, we've just kind of started with a bit of evidence, but we needed a point really. Imagine it's almost like a peel paragraph. Um, so what's the point we're making here? Um, unfortunately, so many young people have been infected by this terrible um, musical disease. Then I'd go, one teenager who wishes to remain anonymous. So I'd introduce the uh, the idea there. Then I'd do like an Ella link at the end. So I'd link it to the what I'm writing about or my own ideas. Again, through a rhetorical question or direct address. Um, I would then put something like, can't you see? It's now time to ditch the profanity and dive into the um, purity you know so I've tried to use a bit of alliteration there as well so again try to be creative use the techniques that you've been learning on your retrieval sheet and use the transferable phrases that we've been learning together okay so we're now going to go through the planning structures and how you plan a response and the paragraph structure you'd follow so we're going to do an active listen then record I will live model for you a certain task I'll go through those steps and when I finish, I want you to write out the steps to success I've explored. So I'm going to attempt the task there in the grey box in the middle of the screen. Write a letter to your head teacher arguing your views on the disadvantages and advantages of gaming, a topic that we've mentioned previously. Your challenge is to see if you can include some timings as well. So I'll go through it step by step. I'll have a go at planning it myself and then I want you to write down anything you can remember and recall from those steps. So there's my task at the bottom of the screen and I'm going to keep that there because I want to look at the key words and one thing I'll make sure I do is highlight, underline and annotate the key words in the task. So it's a letter, so I need to make sure I've got the right opening and closing. It's to my head teacher, so it needs to be formal. Um, I could be the character of a, a student, but I could equally be a teacher. And I'm going to circle underline the word gaming and I'm just going to put some key ideas around that that I've already got so um, distraction um, skill development um, social skills so just some ideas that I've got there then I want to make sure I plan out my key points and I've put the six types of paragraph and the order that you would generally write them in so after you've put your dear whoever it is so dear miss or mister uh, and your head teacher's name you're going to start with a shocking opening, something that's going to grab their attention, maybe a one word sentence or a triplet just to grab them. And then I'll write the rest of that paragraph, giving my view on in my case gaming. Secondly, I'll do an envisage this paragraph where I describe a scene in detail. Maybe I would for this describe um, somebody um, who's if I'm if I'm against it, somebody who's had negative effects of gaming, maybe their eyes are bloodshot, they're in a darkened room, maybe they're ill, or if I'm doing a positive, then winning a trophy or something like that. Then thirdly, any problems you can think of. So the problems with associated with gaming in my case, um, lack of social skills, or the problem of people not understanding gaming if I'm being positive. Then a counter argument, which we've discussed before. Then any solutions you can think of. And finally, a reflective closing. And that's where you look back at your opening and you try to repeat what you said, um, but in a slightly different way. So if I used, for example, a triplet, I would use the same thing at the end, but maybe slightly change it. And I'll show you what I mean next. Okay, so here's my plan. So I've decided at the top there of my plan in the gray box that I'm a student, but the kind of student I am is is I'm a top set student. I'm very, um, I'm highly intelligent and able, um, but I'm a gamer as well. And I feel misunderstood. I feel like people um, are constantly berating gamers, but I'm one and, and I'm getting good grades. So that's my kind of voice and my opinion. My first paragraph I've put SO for shocking opening. I haven't bothered writing the full thing because as we learned, uh, it just needs to be detailed enough. It doesn't need to be overly detailed. And I'm gonna start with 
death, destruction and devastation. Those That triplet and alliteration to say these are the words often associated with modern games. However, you know, and I'm going to go into how actually it's a very creative thing. I might talk about Minecraft and games like that where people are able to um, use their imagination. For my second paragraph, I've put E.T., um, for envisage this and I'm going to describe winning a tournament and the the feel of the trophy and the confetti falling and I'll be very descriptive I'll use my imagery and similes and metaphors P for problem I'll put people don't understand gaming they, they they're prejudiced against it they think it's just teenagers sat in a darkened room um, by themselves they don't get the um, what happens in in the skills development of gaming CA counter argument I'll say people will say but it takes away revision and learning time However, this is my counter, it's a learning tool and you're learning resilience and independence and other skills that you need. Uh, S, solutions, I put, um, maybe we could have gaming in, gaming in lessons and we can stop the prejudice and open up people's minds. We could collaborate with games companies and come up with uh, games that are educational and part of our curriculum. And then finally, reflective closing. Now look what I've done here. My opening was death, destruction, devastation. My ending is life creation purpose. So I've kind of done the opposite and I'm saying these are the words I associate with gaming. So I've flipped it on its head and that's what we mean by a cyclical ending, which is on your retrieval sheet. We come right back to the beginning and we change it. A bit like the hero's journey that we studied back when we did narrative writing. So those are the steps that you'd follow. I w now want you to, in your notebook, write down anything you can remember. So pause the recording. Um, I understand there's things on the screen right now, but maybe we'll have a blank screen next and you can just put down anything you can remember from those steps. Okay, so there we are. I've blanked the screen out for you. So anything you can remember, just spend about two or three minutes, pause the recording and press play when you finish. Okay, so the main things you should have got from that is uh, the six paragraphs, shocking opening, envisage this, problem, counter argument, solutions, and reflective closing. Um, you could have looked at my example. Uh, in terms of timings, I didn't really mention much about that for your challenge, but ideally you want to spend about five to 10 minutes planning. You want to spend about 30 minutes writing. And for each paragraph, therefore, you're looking at about six or seven minutes. That should take you through then uh, to have a really concise but detailed piece of writing. And what I'll do now is I'll go over more specifically how to structure it. So it will be, we'll go right down into the detail now. Okay, so I've created here for you a map, um, a writing map for writing out a letter. Now, bear in mind, it could be any text type, article or speech, and you just change the opening, as we always say. Um, if you have this uh, on a PowerPoint, you could print out this. This is slide 12 if you're on a PowerPoint. Uh, same with a PDF. You could just print out this page and you've got yourself a little writing map. If you haven't, of course, you could just copy out the sections here or just pause the recording and write it out. Uh, in your notebook. So as you can see here, we begin, number one, uh, if it's a letter, by addressing our audience. And that just means dear and their name. So dear Miss Park, dear Mr. Murphy, whoever your head teacher is, comma after the name. Then I've put in the grey box underneath, number two, begin your introduction with a shocking word or phrase. So like I did, death, destruction, devastation, whatever you want to put. Then in that slightly, I'd call that red, would you call that red, maybe brown box, I would then outline my argument. What do I say? Am I saying I'm for or against gaming or whatever the topic is? Then I've put in the blue box, envisage this. Number three, write an imagery paragraph, creating description for the reader. Number four, notice I've put in that gray box a one sentence paragraph. Now that is on your retrieval sheet as a key piece of technical accuracy. And I really wanna see this now because it's a very powerful thing to use. Just a, a short sentence, like for example, there will never something, um, we must something. It's always a useful tool to have um, as part of your writing uh, strategy. Then number five, a counter argument, and I've started that off for you there. Of course, we cannot ignore the fact that what can't we ignore? What's the true thing? What's an opinion people have? And then make sure you put a however in later. And finally, your conclusion, end with the same phrase you opened with or slightly change it to make sure that it's cyclical. So there's a map you can be following for the task we're going to have a go at in the next few minutes. Okay, so here is the task that I want you to attempt in this final session of this scheme. So modern music, 
Television and movies are causing young people to become violent and uncaring. Write a letter to your head teacher giving your views about this statement. So you're going to write again to your head teacher. So think about them and the kind of things that would be important to them. Um, and again, make sure that you think about the character you're going to be. You could just be yourself or you could be a different type of student. You could have different hobbies. You could be a teacher, a member of staff. Um, you could even be a parent, couldn't you? A concerned parent who's... Um, whose son or daughter is an avid gamer and you're really worried about them. I've left for you the writing map on the top right hand corner of the screen so you can use that to help you write so you don't have to keep going back and looking back at what we had there. But I've also put in the bottom right hand corner for you those transferable phrases we've been learning so that will help you along. Now don't forget to cause your sentences to flow like we were learning previously and we did in our starter task today. So think about the opening and closing of each paragraph. You've got 30 minutes to write this and I suggest you start by planning. And if you remember in the steps to success I went through when I modeled for you how to plan, I began by highlighting, underlining and annotating keywords. So in your notebook, write down the question first, including the statement that's in the gray box there. When you finish that, annotate it and label it. Then do your six point plan. And finally, you can begin writing like we have there in the writing map. So watch your timings, spend 30 minutes, pause the recording and press play when you're finished. OK, well done on all your hard work, not only in that particular task, but in the entire scheme that you've gone through here. I hope that you've um, managed to complete the whole scheme. I'm very uh, impressed if you have. Uh, proud of you as you should be proud of yourselves. And I hope you've enjoyed aspects of this, that we can be a bit more creative in this scheme. So our final self-assessment then, and this can go for both what we've written today, but also the writing we've done over the last two sessions. I want you to write out these five skills and I want you to, um, or four skills rather, and I want you to um, rag yourself red, amber or green for how confident you are with each. So I have used a clear character voice throughout. So is it obvious that you are a concerned parent, high ability student, whoever you are, green if you have, have you used a range of transferable phrases, those phrases we've been learning and that were at the bottom right hand corner of the screen just now. If you've been using those pretty well, Amber, if you've used them and embedded them and extended and adapted them green. Um, have you sandwiched your paragraphs with an engaging opening and closing sentence to link them like we were doing in the starter? So rhetorical questions are great for that. And make sure you introduce the topic of the, uh, the paragraph with a topic sentence. If you've been doing that green. And finally, have you been using uh, up leveled and sophisticated vocabulary in your paragraphs like we were learning right at the start with narrative writing? Those words that are on the, the top of your um, retrieval sheets that you've been using each each um, beginning of each session those are the words you want to be using so red amber green each of those and again i hope that everything that you've been learning you realize isn't just for over the last seven weeks but is actually skills and key um key information that you can be using not just in english going forward into year nine but but throughout your lives as well there's certain vocabulary certain skills that i think will be useful as life skills so well done on everything you've done for this uh, this scheme I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for taking part.